All righty then. So this is going to be the start of our fourth and final unit. Uh, and in it, we are going to study two and three dimensional figures as well as measurements of those figures in two and three dimensional space. Okay, so our EQs for today and what we're gonna be talking about, so I guess I should start with the title. So we're gonna begin to motivate the concept of area and we're gonna motivate it uh, using quadrilaterals. And you can see that in our EQs. So we're gonna talk about, well, what is area? What is a quadrilateral? Why can we define a quadrilateral as the sum of two triangles? Is the area of a parallelogram equal to the area of a rectangle with the same height and base? And last but not least, we're going to really delve into uh, the characteristics of key quadrilaterals. Okay, there's six of them. We're going to talk about them a little bit. Well, actually, in the video, I'm not, but there's going to be an attachment for you to uh, mull over, and we'll talk about it also in class. Okay, so without further ado, so let's go ahead and answer EQ1. So what is area? And I kind of give you the answer to EQ1 right here uh, in the title of this slide. Okay, so area is the two-dimensional quantification of space. Uh, to put it simply, um, it's the measure of how many square units a figure is made of. Okay, so it's a two-dimensional measure of space. So we've got one-dimensional measure, which is distance, right? Perimeter is also a form of distance, which is, you know, that means it's also one-dimensional. Then you have two-dimensional area and surface area, and we'll get into that later when we get into 3D figures. And then you have the 3D measure of space volume, which again, we'll get into later. Right now, we're going to focus on the two-dimensional. Okay, so let's move on to EQ2. What is a quadrilateral? Okay, and to get to that, we are going to first reconsider what we did uh, in the do now. So in the do now, I mean, you probably figured it out pretty quick that uh, this is a three, four, five right triangle here. Three, four, five, right? It's just been scaled up, uh, excuse me, by a factor of four. So our height is 12 our base is simply 16 and our hypotenuse is 20 right but that's not what's important here okay so in the do now i ask you how many how many one inch squares can you fit inside here and the answer would be found simply by multiplying your base times your height Okay, so we would have 12 high this way, right? We'd have 12 squares stacked this high. And we would have 16 squares going this way. And if you just multiply, right, you'll get your answer. And the answer there, that would be 120 plus, here, let me see. Quit trying to do this in my head. So 12 times 16, 192. So we could fit 192 square inches or one inch squares, which means the area of this two dimensional figure right here is approximately, and I shouldn't say approximately, it is exactly 192. I don't know why I'm saying approximately. I guess I'm just so used to saying that. But it is exactly equal to 192 square inches. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer EQ2 while we're here. And now that we've further motivated what area is. So EQ2, what is a quadrilateral? A quadrilateral is any figure, and I mean, you should know this, any figure, or I should say any polygon, right? So it's a polygon with four sides and vertices like how I ran out of room and just wrote it over that. Okay, so on the EQ3, why can we define a quadrilateral as a sum of two triangles? And the answer is pretty clear in this picture. Okay, let me carefully erase some of this crap. Okay, so I don't know why I erased that. So what we've got 
is, if you think about it, two triangles here are forming this uh, quadrilateral, this rectangle. Okay, obviously this is a rectangle, and we'll talk about why it's a rectangle here in a little bit. Okay, so this guy we can say is made of two triangles. It's made of this triangle plus this triangle. Okay, this hypotenuse, right, where they kind of come together, we can call that a diagonal. Okay, a diagonal is simply the distance between two vertices on a quadrilateral or on any polygon, really, any polygon that's not a triangle. Okay, so we see that we have a second diagonal and every quadrilateral has two diagonals. Okay, there's two possible. Anyway, because of that, right, so here's the same diagonal shared by both triangles. Because of that, we can say that this triangle A plus this triangle B adds up to this entire rectangle, okay? So from this, we're getting two things, okay? From this, we're getting two things. The area of a rectangle is equal to simply its base times its height, right? And don't worry so much about writing that one down because we're going to learn something here in a second that kind of makes that irrelevant. The second thing that we take from what we just did here is that the area of a triangle is equal to one half the area of a rectangle. Okay? And what that means is, I don't understand what this thing just did. And what that means is, all I wanted to do is click the eraser. The area of a triangle is simply one half times its base times its height or base times height over two or base times height divided by two. Okay, so this is the important one you should write down right now. And again, this is elementary school stuff. You should know this already. Okay, so why can we define a quadrilateral as the sum of two triangles? Because of this right here, a triangle is half of a uh, quadrilateral, okay? Its area is half. So if you have a triangle and a quadrilateral with the same height and same base, right? Or if you just draw the diagonals on any quadrilateral, it doesn't have to be a rectangle. So if I've got, you know, just some ugly looking nonsense here, right? If I go ahead and draw the diagonals on this guy, so there would be one diagonal. Well, what do you have? Holy dog crap. You have two triangles. Or if I go from here to here instead, either way, you still get one triangle, two triangles. Okay, so that's important, and that's why the area of a triangle is one half base times height, because it's literally one half of a quadrilateral. Okay, so now let's look at a more real world example, if you can call it that. So we've got a potato farmer named Potato Penelope that wants to know how many potatoes she can plant on her two acre plot of land. Okay, so real quick, let's draw a picture. So she's got two acres, right? So this is one acre, this is one acre. Right, and another one, okay? Which means basically we have another rectangle problem. So this guy here would be two acres wide and one acre quote unquote tall or long. Point is there's two dimensions to it. Okay, so she wants to know how many potatoes she can plant on her two acre plot of land each potato plant needs one square yard of space to grow healthily. And I give you a little, a little reminder, a yard is three feet. So one yard equals three feet. Oops. Okay, so let's start on number one. If an acre is 43,560 square feet, right? So that means we would have 
and it's a different color here. So 43, 5, 60, right? And then two times 43, 5, 60 over here, right? And that's in feet. Okay, so if an acre is that many square feet, how many square yards is Penelope's plot of land? And this is going to be important to answering the question. Uh, she wants to know how many potatoes she can plant. Every potato needs one square yard, right? So we need the area of this guy, but we need it in uh, square yards, not in square feet. Okay, so to do that, if one yard equals three feet, right, all we need to do is take the 43,560 and divide that by three. So 43,560 divided by three, we get 14,520. Okay, so this is yards. So that means this guy, this dimension here, or our height, is 14,520. Okay, and over here, okay, so what we would really have is two times the 14,520, so times two, I get 29,040, and that's yards. Okay, so now I have my base and my height in yards, right? Now I can find the area in square yards of her land. Okay, so I can go ahead and just take my two numbers, base, so 14,520 times height, 29,040, multiply those two together, and that's a lot. Okay, so what we end up with is a huge number. She's going to be able to plant a crap ton of potatoes. So let me write this out. So base times height equals our area, right? And we get approximately, well, not approximately, so used to saying that, we get exactly 421,660, 421,660, 800. Okay, so that's 420,660,800 potatoes. That is a crap ton of potatoes that she'll be able to plant. Okay, so let me back up, let me back up. So to answer number one, our answer for number one is how many square yards, right? And that is 421,660,800 square yards. Okay, that's our answer number one. Our answer number two is literally the same thing. How many potatoes? The same amount. Right, because one square yard equals one potato. Okay. So just a little bit of an example of real world applications of area. And I mean, you all know how important it is to understand that concept. Okay, so now we're going to be relating rectangles and parallelograms. And you're going to understand why I told you not to write the area of a rectangle formula down. And we're fixing to see why. So to see why, we're going to have to answer EQ4. Okay, and EQ4 is asking us, is the area of a rectangle equal to the area of a parallelogram with the same height and base? So here we see two quadrilaterals, right? A rectangle and a parallelogram. Okay, and if you don't remember what, so let's go ahead and make the distinction. So rectangles have four 90 degree vertices. That's how I know this is a rectangle. Parallelograms have two pairs, two pairs of opposite parallel sides. Okay, that's how I know that that guy is a parallelogram. Okay, so we're fixing to make a comparison uh, that's going to give us a formula that we need okay so we've already seen right if we want to find the area of a rectangle all we do is multiply the base times the height okay so base 20 
times the height, nine. Well, that's 180 square units or square centimeters in this case, right? That's the units we're using here. Okay, over here on the right, we see that we've got a parallelogram with the same base and the same height. Okay, so I'll use a different color here. It's a little bit different. It's just shaped weird, right? But all the same, okay, we're going to see if the area of this parallelogram will be the same as the area of our rectangle over there. Okay, so what we end up with is we've got two triangles, right? On either side of this guy. Okay, so a height of nine, an unknown base on both of them. So what we're going to do is find the area of these triangles and then we're going to add it to the area of this rectangle in here. Okay, so let's figure this out. So this is pi over three, oops, I wrote six. Okay, which means it's 60 degrees. Okay, so all I need to do is set it up as tangent pi over three is equal to nine over x, right? The tangent of pi over three or the tangent of 60 is going to be the square root of three. Or you can just use your calculator, right? No big deal. Okay, so if we go ahead and cross multiply, square root of three, x equals nine, x equals nine over the square root of three. Can't have that though, we gotta rationalize. Multiply by square root of three on top and bottom, we get nine square root of three over three, which is equal to, when we cancel out the nine with the three, three square root of three. Okay, so our base of the triangle is three square root of three. Okay, so now we have base and height. All we need to do is, and you're gonna see something here. So we're gonna do base times height divided by two. So area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, right? So that's gonna be 27 square root of three over two. Okay, now we have two of these, right? We've got these two triangles here. So if I'm dividing by two and multiplying this guy here by two, right? They're effectively inverses, they'll cancel out. So the area of my two triangles so two times the area of my triangle, or two of them, is simply 27 square root of three. Okay, so now I just need to add that to the area of what's inside here. Okay, and what we've got, so if this whole thing here is 20 centimeters, right? That whole thing is 20 centimeters. If I just subtract 20 centimeters from what I got for X, right? So that's this three square root of three. So this right here, draw this separate over here so you can see what I'm talking about. So this bottom side is equal to 20 minus three square root of three, because I have to take this away from the 20. Okay, and we know our height is nine. Okay, so when I throw that in the calculator, so that's going to simply be 9 times 20 minus 3 square root of 3. Okay, so 9 times 20 minus 3 square root of 3. Okay, I get 133 point blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the area of this guy is approximately 133.23. Okay. So if I add that to the 27 square root of three, so it's in my calculator, I'm just going to hit plus 27 square root of three. And holy dog crap. So when I add this plus the area of that rectangle there, 
which was this year, okay, I get exactly 180. The exact same measurement. So what does that tell me? What does that tell me? Well, that tells me that the area of a rectangle is equal to the area of a parallelogram with the same height and base, okay? So we don't need the area of a rectangle. All we need is the area of a parallelogram, and the area of a parallelogram is the same thing. It's simply base times height, okay? And we could have done that from the beginning. We could have taken base times height, and we would have gotten the exact same answer as we did for the rectangle. Okay, so that's the important takeaway there. Okay, so why is that? Well, because a rectangle is a parallelogram. Okay, a rectangle is a parallelogram. Okay, so in the instructions, so we're going to do some guided practice and just apply what we've learned, right? So we know how to calculate the area of a rectangle, parallelogram, and triangle. Okay, so we're going to put that all into use, and we're also, besides just calculating the area, we're also going to calculate the perimeter. Okay, mentioned that before I forget to do it. Okay, so figure D, we have just your basic uh, rectangle. Okay, we know it's a rectangle because we have the four 90s. Okay, we know the diagonal length is 24 feet, and we know the height is 12 feet. Okay, but we do not know what the base here is. Okay, to figure that out, we're going to have to do basic trig. Okay, so 12, 24 are missing B. Okay, so there's two ways to go about this. I can use basic trig and figure out what this angle theta here is, right? So that would be this angle here. And that's going to let me figure out what uh, this side B is, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the arc sine of 12 over 24 because I've got opposite over hypotenuse, right? Oops, 24, not 14. And that reduces down to the arc sine of one half, which we should already know is going to be 30 degrees or pi over six. Okay, so this guy here, 30 degrees. Okay, so now I can just use cosine of 30 is equal to uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, right? I can use my calculator or I can use what I know uh, about special angles, but you guys are already used to using your calculators. I'm just going to cross multiply. And that is going to give me 24 cosine 30 is equal to B, my base. Right, so 24 cosine 30. Okay, that is going to just give me 12 square root of three, or approximately 20.78, depending on if you use the calculator or what you did. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and use this because this is exact. So if I want the area the area of this uh, parallelogram, AKA a rectangle, I'm going to do base times height, which is 144 square root of three, and throw that in the calculator. That's gonna be 249.42. So the area, the area of this guy, is approximately 249.42 square feet, right? But we still need to calculate what its perimeter is. Okay, so in order to do that, I mean, come on. All we're going to do is add all the sides up, right? So we know that the base is equal to 12 square root of 3. Right, we know the height is 
12, which means this guy is 12, which means this guy is also 12 square root of 3, because a rectangle is a parallelogram after all. The sides are going to be congruent, opposite of one another. So I'm going to have 12 plus 12 plus 12 square root of 3 plus 12 square root of 3. And if we work smart, not hard, we can simplify this down into 24 plus 24 square root of 3. Either way, we get the same answer of 65.57. So our perimeter in this case is approximately 65.57. Now our units are going to be one-dimensional. They're going to be linear feet. They're not going to be square feet. Okay, our area is square feet. Our perimeter is linear or regular feet. So I'm not going to put a one or a two or anything here. It's implied. Well, if there's nothing right here, it's implied that it's a one for one dimensional or linear. So I don't need to write anything. Okay. Now let's move on to the next figure. So figure E, this one's going to be simple enough. So I already know what the base is. I already know what the height is. It's a parallelogram, right? Again, area of a parallelogram is equal to base times height. However, I've got a base that's in inches and a height that's in yards. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier if I convert, because they have to be in the same units. Otherwise, you're going to make them, it's not going to be correct. So it'd be a lot easier if I just convert them both into yards, right? So this one's already in yards, so I don't need to convert anything there. But I need to convert the 360 into yards. Okay, so let's recall one foot is 12 inches and one yard is three feet. Okay, so 360 inches well, that's going to be equal to how many feet? Okay, we need to do that first. Okay, so 360 inches. Well, there's 12 inches in one foot, so we would divide by 12. Okay, and simply put, that's going to give me 30 feet. And then we need it to be in yards, so we would just divide by 3. That's going to give me the yards, and we get 10 yards. So our base here is equal to 10 yards. Okay, we don't need the inches. Okay, so now that we have base and height, right? So base times height, we simply get 50. So our area is equal to precisely 50 square yards. Okay, now we need our perimeter. Right, well, to calculate our perimeter, we need to know all four sides of this quadrilateral. Okay, and we only know one, well, technically two of the sides, right? So this base right here, we just figured out, is 10 yards. Okay, but we need to know this guy. And when you look at the picture this way, what have we got? We've got a right triangle. Okay, and something nifty about parallelograms, right? Opposite angles are congruent. So if this guy here is pi over 3, the vertex opposite of it is also pi over 3. Okay, and pi over 3 in degrees, we should know by now, is 60 degrees. So what we've got, this guy is 60 degrees. And guys, again, I can't stress enough, see how I'm drawing pictures separate, right? Look at individual pieces of things by drawing them separate. If you're not drawing pictures, it's a lot harder to wrap your head around. Okay, draw pictures. Okay, anyway, so this guy is five, right? We need to know this hypotenuse. Okay, so to figure that out, and we're just gonna call this hypotenuse X. Okay, that means this side over here is also X. So we can just use sine. So sine 60 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. You can go ahead and cross multiply. We get x sine 60 equals 5. x equals 5 divided by the sine of 60. Okay, and we throw that into the calculator. 
five over sine of 60. And we get approximately 5.77. And if you didn't use a calculator, if you use the fact that, you know, sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2, and you cross multiplied from there, you would get 10 square root of 3 over 3. Let me double check because I did that in my head. Yeah, and that's the exact same thing. Okay, either way you get the same answer. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and use this number because it's more accurate. It's more precise. Okay, so to calculate my perimeter, I'm going to do x plus x, right, plus 10 plus 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So that would be 10 plus 10, so 20 plus, and we can go ahead and just say two times this guy, right? So two times the uh, 10 square root of three over three. So that would be 20 square root of three over three, right? So that's what we're going to use in the calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and do 20 times the square root of 3 divided by 3 plus 20. Okay, and that gives me a perimeter of about 31.55. 31.55 linear yards. Okay. Moving on. So now let's look at our final figure here. We've got a triangle. So area is going to be easy. Well, I shouldn't say that. The perimeter is going to be the easiest. Okay, but let's do the area first because that's usually the easiest one to calculate right off the bat because it's less stuff that we have to figure out. So looking at this triangle, we notice the two base angles are identical. 7 pi over 18, 7 pi over 18. That means this is isosceles. Okay, if a triangle is isosceles, it has two identical angles, meaning it also has two congruent sides. So if this guy is 80, that means this guy is also 80. Okay, so that said, now we just need to figure out the height and the base. Okay, and what we've got is the hypotenuse of 80. So this is 80, 7 pi over 18. Let's go ahead and convert that to degrees here. And remember, degrees is equal to 180 uh, times your angle in radians divided by pi. So we've got 180 times our angle in radians, all divided by pi. Pi's cancel. We end up with 180 times 7 over 18. And the way you're going to throw that in the calculator is simply 180 times 7 divided by 18. That is going to give you 70 degrees. So this guy here is 70 degrees. Okay, we don't know x, we don't know h, but we can easily find them by using sine and cosine. So to find x, right, and because this is isosceles, okay, this x right here, our base is equal to two times that because that's half of our base. Okay, anyway, so we're just going to use cosine. So cosine 70 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Cross multiply, we get 80. Cosine 70 is equal to x. Throw that in the calculator. 80 cosine 70. We get 27.36. Okay, and that is in feet. Now, that's cool and everything, right? But we need to know the entire base. Well, the entire base, we only found half of it. So all we have to do is multiply that by two. And we get 54.72. So our base is approximately 54.72 feet. Okay, so we can go ahead and calculate the perimeter if we want, because we know one, two, three right we know all three sides so 80 plus 80 so i've got the 54.72 plus 80 plus 80 and we get 214.72 so our perimeter was the easier one to calculate so we went ahead and did that first so 214.72 
linear feet, so just regular feet. Okay, now we still need the area. And to get the area, we need to find the height. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate the height. Well, to do that, we're just going to use sine. Sine 70 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cross multiply 80 sine 70 equals our height. Throw that in the calculator. 80 times the sine of 70. We get 75.18. Okay, so to calculate our area, right, this is a triangle, so we're going to do base 54.72 times height 75.18, all of that over 2. Okay, and to throw it in the calculator, you just multiply base times height and then at the end divide by 2. So 54.72 times 75.18. We get 4,113 point blah, blah, blah. Then we divide that by two. Our area is approximately 2,056.92 square feet. And that would be our answer for the area. Okay, so calculating this stuff is not very difficult. We're just getting a little more technical because we know how to do pretty advanced trig now. Okay, so last EQ, EQ5, what are the key characteristics of quadrilaterals? So in general, right, so to answer this first little piece, what generalizations can made, be made about them? Okay, so first thing is obviously four sides, oops, four sides and four vertices. Okay, second thing, so that's the first thing. Second thing is the interior angles add to 360 degrees. Okay, they don't add to 180 like they do on a triangle. They add to 360 degrees or two pi radians. Okay. And those are the two main generalizations that we're going to look at. Oh, there's a third one. So, and I talked about this earlier. So, every quadrilateral has two diagonals. Let's see if I can spell diagonals right. I think I spelled it right. Okay, so there's our generalizations we can make about all quadrilaterals. Okay, for more specifics, I need you guys to look at the quadrilateral uh, overview. Okay, so... That does it for this lesson video. So we've answered what area is. Okay, area is the amount of uh, square units a two-dimensional figure is composed of. Okay, or how much 2D space something occupies. Okay, what a quadrilateral is. It's a polygon with four vertices and four sides. Why can we define a quadrilateral as the sum of two triangles? Because a triangle is half of a quadrilateral. We saw that with the area formulas, right? So the area of a parallelogram was base times height, and the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, or half of that. Okay, uh, EQ4 is the area of a parallelogram equal to the area of a rectangle with the same height and base? Yes. Okay, which means this is the important formula we took away from that. Okay, and to reiterate, so we learned two formulas. So the area of a triangle is equal to base times height over two. And the area of a parallelogram, which also works on rectangles, a rectangle is a parallelogram. The area of a parallelogram is simply base times height. Okay, and what are the key characteristics of quadrilaterals? Well, I just had that over here on this last slide. Okay. And to go in further depth, remember to look at your quadrilateral overview, okay? So, obviously, you're going to start on Applied Practice 1, and you need to be going over that quadrilateral overview because we're going to have a quadrilateral quiz on Friday, okay? So, make sure and study and be prepared. If you have any questions over anything, obviously, let me know. Otherwise, goodbye.